Hi guys, old Radio Al here. Welcome to vintage mashup number six, I believe. And a few things to say here at the at the start. I want to go through a few things that have come to my attention, or are things I want to talk about anyway. There's been a lot of. Uh, A lot of good videos posted lately. Guys have really been stepping it, stepping it up. I think. Yeah, radio, TV, phone, all that. He's always got good stuff. Art finally got back into his silver tone. I'm happy to see that. I was worried about him a little bit. I thought maybe he was, and he admitted you know admitted it himself he was intimidated by those coils well it looks like he's back on track and I'm glad to see that uh, that, that guy Joe Earn One eh, he posted one of his oh, well that, since that's number 45 I guess he's got to jump on me there what can I say I'll cover that in a minute here's a guy um, farm radio. I don't know if you guys subscribe to him, but he's always got some good stuff. Good channel. I really like like that. And a battery maker. You know, he's not been posting a lot of videos lately, but he's he's I'm glad to see he's posting some too. Nathan's. He's he's getting to be a prolific poster, and he's always got <laughs> he's always coming up with something. He's got some good stuff. John, oh, I don't know if you guys saw this, but he's he's working on a on a guitar project. You know, uh, it's an, an SG uh, clone. Well, I, I guess if you build it yourself, it's got to be not a not a Gibson, but cool, cool project. As, as you know, in addition to his current radio project, he's doing that. Yeah, John, with this, his uh, 37 model, uh, his Philco, 37 2670. That's going going well. He had a little snag, but it seems like he's got it under control. Anyway, yeah. Oh yeah, Carl, Sky Carl. Posted this video on on his Variac just recently too. So there's a lot of good. <laughs> uh, there's Bill. He he's always you know he's always posting. So there's a lot of good stuff to to watch out there. You know as winter is hopefully winding its way down. So go out and look at some of this stuff, guys. And and I want to bring special attention to uh, a couple of guys. And this is the first one. Dennis, I don't know what what else you can say that I haven't already said about Dennis, but I'm going to give it a shot. Guys, Dennis is posting some just fantastic videos on on his channel. He's posting some theory videos, some math as it applies to electronics videos in addition to his uh, his radio repairs. I mean just textbook stuff. I mean Dennis is a teacher. I mean along along the same lines as uh, Rick McWhorter, you know, except Dennis, Dennis has done it professionally. He's an excellent teacher, and and guys, he's he's posting things that you, if you don't know, you need to know. And a lot of it is a refresher for for some people, but you know, it's it's like refresher that that you go, oh yeah. So. If you haven't already, subscribe to Dennis's channel. 
and keep up. It's hard to keep up with it. I have a hard time myself. You know, I just my time is limited, so I tend to watch all of Dennis's videos and spurts. But please, if you haven't already, subscribe to Dennis's channel and give these things. You'll you'll be surprised at what at what he can impart to you. And then one last thing I want to bring attention to is is this guy, Tim, AM Station Engineer. Recently mentioned by a couple of us, uh, Nathan and myself, I know for sure. Uh, Tim had a hard way to go, but I'm happy to report that I've been in, in fairly... Uh, regular correspondence with him lately and he he seems to be doing a little bit better and wishes everyone well and we certainly wish him well and I'd really like like it if Tim got back to the point where he can you know actively start commenting on all all of uh, our videos again always always a lot of insight so Tim if you if you see this, I hope you continue on your upward trend, and uh, we'll we'll be happy to see you back. Now I want to get back to what I call the the John effect. He posted this video today, and I've noticed two things that happen whenever he posts a video and he mentions me in a video. A circuit board just like this one is. By the way, this is Mishmash. I'm sitting here watching all the videos that you folks have posted over the weekend. Uh, Dennis Carter, Nathan, and, and now old Radio Al. And this is his mashup uh, five part two. You know, I'm really enjoying these videos. I'm just kind of sitting here, really just watching them and not to. <laughs> I am so tired. I can't even write any comments. I can't even respond to the comments on the video I just posted. Anyway, he 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 puts this stuff in his videos. Uh, you know, I don't know what this guy's thinking. Well, we get some clothes on Cupid John there. Wifey says it looks just like me. <laughs> Do you know how hard it is to find clothes for a a small <laughs> cupid doll like that? Anyway, we'll see what we can do. And then and then there is this. I'm watching old Radio Al's uh, recent vintage mashup number five part one video. Let's hear what he has to say in the first part here. I asked quite often how I transmit. Uh, you know, music of the era on my my radios, and the answer to it is really quite simple. I use an AM transmitter. Yes, he uses an AM broadcast band transmitter, and he does all. He buys his. You know, he has bought <laughs> and used the SS Tran, which is the AMT three thousand. And I think right now he's using the Vectronix BEC-1290. He also has uh, or used, or, or I, th I assume he's used it, the FM to AM converter transmitter. And prior to all of this, he had a, a tube outfit that he purchased. It had uh, one or two tubes, I think it was, all purchased. Well... <laughs> you gotta do is buy a few part <laughs> okay I take exception to that you know that AMT 3000 and the and the Vectronics units yeah I bought them I bought them and I assembled them and put them together just like most of us have and it, you know uh, maybe not quite as cheap as this one this thing that this abomination that he's 
using in his house. I'm surprised wifey lets him get away with this. I mean, I mean, it, it, do want my eyes deceive me, or is is that a Quaker Oats box that he's got that coil <laughs> wound around? Oh, come on, give me a break. Anyway, all, all in good fun. Uh, but here's the, here's the, uh, what I call the, the John effect. Two things happen when John mentions me in a, in a video. I wonder if it happens to you guys too. Let me know. Uh, this is the the latest video that I I uploaded on the FM AM transmitter. And if you look down here, uh, down my list of you know, yeah, I know I don't get very many views, but but you'll look down that column and the dislikes you see zero 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 well my latest video there it is there it is my one thumbs down and that's the John effect <laughs> like I said two things happen one thing that happens is I always get a few new subscribers when he mentions me because you know John gets a lot of views so you know I got a little surge in, in viewers and subscribers I'm up to 388 and the other thing that happens is I always get a thumbs down and the reason for that is <laughs> John's troll always follows over to my channel and gives me a thumb down. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, you know, again, it's all for fun, so who cares? You know. <laughs> but that's the John effect. One thumbs down and a couple new subscribers. Alright, on to other things. We're going to take a Another short trip this time to uh, my favorite antique store and then, uh, see what see what's new. Well, I feel like it's my duty to report on the advanced advancing <laughs> state of deterioration of the sign on my favorite antique store here. We had severe winds. We had gusts up to 55 miles an hour. They tell me last yesterday evening last night and we've lost <laughs> lost some more letters wow I think they're gonna have to go with a whole new sign here come springtime let's go ahead and take a look see what we can find a couple of interesting new things here guys this is a slightly newer version of the uh, 5A7 that I've got Motorola will flip up portable. And here's a kind of similar Z net. Kind of cool. I think I'll pass on those. Interesting. Little GE TV metal case. A couple of things for Travis in Kentucky. It's a 1913 whistle sign. 475 bucks. Oof. It's a pop cola sign. It's 10 or I guess it's 10. 850 bucks. It's like a 
top top. Bottle cap. And there's a new grape soda sign. And it's for Travis. He's a soda sign fan. There's a RC Cola. Cola. That's expensive. Cool. You know, I keep warning uh, old Radio Al up there that Max is going to come up there and just tear up his ankle bones. And uh, old Al says, you know, it's, it's kind of hard to be afraid of a dog that wears a sweater. Well, I'll tell you what. This is just his, you know, out in public sweater. You know, when he just wants to look his best and all that. But I'll tell you what. Well, when that's he what gets he thinks the about me. On, <laughs> he doesn't wear this sweater. This is the sweater he wears. Here's another Philco that followed me home. Well, it didn't really follow me home. I actively sought this one since I saw one like it on uh, Greg's channel. Greg Van Beek's Gavin. WB1. I wanted one of these because it's a AMFN Philco. It's a 49905. And I saw this one on um, eBay. Yeah, yeah, I know what I said about eBay. But I saw this one. You know, I still look at eBay for just to see the radios that are on there and I saw this one and I noted that it was uh, being sold by someone locally so I contacted them and I told them you know I would uh, like to purchase it but I wanted to pick it up I didn't want to pay shipping charges you know that just seemed ridiculous to me and the guy agreed so I asked him, you know, what would be a good time to pick it up. And he said, you know, he lived in southwest St. Louis and I live, you know, about 35 miles from St. Louis. But I work down in that area. I said, how about picking it up like it during your lunch hour or something like that? He said, okay. So I asked him where he worked. And come to find out, he works for the same company that I do. <laughs> In a different location. I work for a, a healthcare company. I'm a, a network analyst. And he worked uh, in accounts receivable. Uh, about a 15 minute drive so small world I'll file that under small world well, it was nice to meet him and talk to him a little bit he's a radio collector as well as a seller so there you go uh, it's first first look at it and of course needs needs to be cleaned up and Get all the paint paint specs off of it, and I've already ordered a uh, replacement dial plate from Mark Palmquist, and we'll get it all cleaned up and recapped, and away we go. So look for that pretty soon. Al finally got me motivated to take my AM transmitter. I had it on the other side of the room on a shelf, and. It, Every time I watch his videos, I hear that good music coming out of his really cool old radios. So I decided to move it to the other side of the room permanently. All right, John. I think I've got this figured out now. Your problem is not with my kit transmitters. It's with how they're presented. Somehow, I've got to incorporate some different elements into my transmitters. I've got to 
I don't know, use Tupperware or, or a Quaker Oats box or a cardboard box or something like that. And then I'll put something on it that says AM transmitter so we know that it's a transmitter. Oh, okay. All right, buddy. We'll, we'll get it all straightened out for you. <laughs> uh, just kidding. Yep, John, John's a smart feller. He made his own. All right, guys. I know this video is running a little long, but I wanted to show you what's on my bench right now. Actually, this has been on my bench. This radio has been on my bench. It was sitting all the way in the back there for probably a year and a half. It's one of those things that I kept saying, yeah, I got to do this, I got to do this one, I got to do this one. And I never got around to it. But it's time. I need to, need to do it. You know, I've, uh, it's been noted that I'm partial to Philco's and, and I have to admit I am and if I you know I've told several of you you know that if I had it to do all over again I would probably collect Philco's and nothing but Philco's I just you know that's my radio of choice that being said you know I have I have uh, quite a few different makes and models of radios and every one of them I think brings something to the table you know love them all but there's my awaiting restoration stuff anyway that being said I've always wanted a really cool black dial Zenith and I'm hoping this one will turn out to be that radio it's gonna take a lot of work and all this crumbling wiring but we're going to uh, tackle this one I already cut out most of the wax capacitors cabinets in fairly decent condition it's in it's a solid cabinet but it's going to require that's supposed to be a black stripe around that edge going to require quite a bit of work. I think the brass work will clean up nicely. Everything is here. So, you know, that's that's a good portion of it. Good bones as we say. So that's going to take up a lot of my time here in the near future. Uh, hopefully I'll get it back in and it's uh, the way it looking the way it's supposed to look and playing the way it's supposed to play. Thanks for watching, guys, and uh, more radios, including this one, hopefully, on the way.